Welcome along to Utter Punts. We are your one-stop shop for the NFL. We're made by UK fans of the National Football League. We are basically trying to give you a complete review of last week's games, the preview for this week's TV games, and all of the best betting advice on the planet. It's coming up next. This is Utter Punts. 47-yard touchdown run by the magical quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Big Keith Trailer. Look at him rumble. Things are hotting up in the race for the Super Bowl and there's only one podcast you can trust to keep you bang up today. Utter punts steaming into the divisional weekend like a fat lad at a buffet. Come on. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. Touchdown. No. No. 24 yards. The Giants have knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs. The Giants have knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs. Uh, Outer Punts is an NFL podcast made by UK fans of the National Football League. We are right up for this weekend. Joining me as always down in Birmingham, it's the Viking not in the playoffs, Dave Keane. Thank you for telling everyone in the introduction about my prowess at a barbecue. Thank you very much. I am good at a buffet. Yeah, that does not surprise me. <laughs> so too am I, Dave Keane. Next to me is another man no longer in the playoffs. It's the Statman Dan. Yeah, I normally go dark for about six months after we exit, but I can't believe you've wheeled me out for this tonight. But here we are. We'll be positive for a bit. Uh, so three teams. We all support different teams here on Utter Punts, and there is only one team left you, you in the playoffs. Two. Come on, Utter Punts, and we're right with you throughout this. Yes, yes. Welcome along to Utter Punts. Delighted to have you here. Uh, we are smack bang in the middle of the playoffs, and I felt that it was probably time that I deigned you all my presence. Yeah. Now you're the you know. Uh, Great to have you back, first of all. Good to see you. I'm glad you had a nice time. Thanks, It was man. really good the last couple of weeks. No technical issues at all. Um, excellent production, Andy. Well done. And um, uh, up to you coming back, we were all in the playoffs and you've come back and it's all ended. So thanks for that. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. It's thanks, no man. problem. It's ended pretty well for me so far. I mean, uh, Dave, how's things been for you? You enjoyed it without me? Oh, mate, it, it was really, really good, man. Dan got on incredibly well. Bell was just uber professional, there were no gaps. Um, didn't miss you at all, to be fair. But then you come back and you give me a rinsing over the Vikings, you give me a rinsing over buffets. Um, yeah, I did miss you, really. Yeah, I missed that kind of crap. I, well think, done, it, I, I, think, I think it would be fair at, at this point to say that there was, um, there was a moment where we had to do a Zoom live to Kenya just to make sure that the podcast worked because producer Andy Bell couldn't do it, despite me writing a in-depth, detailed handover document entitled Utter Punt's Handover Document. Still, there were some technical issues. So, some good news, though. Dave and I have been invited on the Walking Dead preview podcast <laughs> for our in-depth knowledge of that programme. <laughs> have always really? got a backup job. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, we, we always knew we were going to get discovered there, this, mate, and uh, a little know. bit of Walking Dead stuff. Why not? So, I love the Walking Dead. That was um, it, it was great until until Andrew Lincoln left it, and then it wasn't very good anymore. I can't believe I, do you mean, do you mean he dies. You just ruined the show for me. I'm not that far along, and I didn't. I, I quite said, frankly, I, I didn't say that. Did I? Shit. Did I say? Have did we got I say spoiler that? alert button? Just not anyway, good I, enough. Actually, I mean, like yeah, I, spoiler spoiler alert needs to go out of the card. You've made it, it a spoiler. It's not here, one. It comes back in here. You've made it a spoiler. Just starts and it ruining isn't one. stuff for everybody. Jeepers <laughs> creepers. <laughs> anyway, yeah, welcome back. Did you have a nice time? I uh, had a lovely time, thank you. Um, one of the joys was the time difference was such that I actually managed to catch a bit of NFL um, whilst Amy was still fast asleep. So I was getting up, going to the gym, and I had the uh, I had some of the games on the on the old uh, phone, which was which was really handy because it was an absolutely incredible week um, in the playoffs. There, there were some absolutely corking games, some results that maybe we didn't see coming and some that you both called in the podcast last week. Yeah, we, we said it's, it, well, for, I said it's, it's my favourite weekend of the year. Uh, I know there's better games to come, but Wildcard Weekend always throws up really good, exciting games. And you always get teams in there that, 
um, have just rode into the playoffs and, and can take a scalp, which we've seen. You get teams that blow leads, you get teams that make comebacks, you get high scoring games, you get really tense low scoring games. Um, and you just get really nice clashes of styles and it's, it's always a good weekend. And I can't remember the last really bad wildcard weekend game. They're, they're just always pretty good. You pleased with the weekend, Dave? Did it go the way that you thought it would? I, I was watching Walking Dead, mate. Didn't catch anything. <laughs> Just Andrew, is Andrew Lincoln it. dead yet? Um, he doesn't <laughs> die. Yeah. No, you can't not yet. Out of it now. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, no, I mean, it was uh, congratulations, dude. I mean, like it's impressive. I, I, why I didn't realise we were in the business of celebrating our second themes progressing, but like you know, I've always had a soft spot for Patrick Mahomes, so I'll probably jump on that bandwagon while you're on the Giants one. Um, I think uh, next season, like it'd be interesting to see which one of our teams can win the, the NFC North will finish higher, and we should probably just like you know just stop the lives and let everyone know that really you're a giant bear, eh? I am, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, at this juncture, I'm just, I'm going to hold this really, really still so it makes it really, really easy to blur out later, all right? Uh, let's move on, shall we? I think um, because there's so much to talk about, the thing to do here is probably to look back on those games and then we'll pick out some of the bits and pieces that we wanted to talk about. So this is the wild card weekend in the NFL all wrapped up for you. Playoff wild card weekend was a blitz of great football and huge headlines. Giant killings, Brady bowing out, amazing comebacks and big teams getting ended. It was a belting weekend to be an NFL fan. Here's what went down. Now, Wild Card Weekend started with the Seahawks' trip to Frisco. The punts called this an absolute shoe-in for the 49ers, and that's what came to pass, despite Dave flirting with the idea of backing the Seahawks. Brock Purdy stepped up again when the spotlight was on with a very measured performance. He chucked three touchdown passes and ran for a fourth score in his playoff debut to enhance what is becoming a remarkable rookie season. Jimmy G isn't being missed, but there are much bigger games ahead for Purdy. A comfortable 41-23 win will do for now. The Chargers travelled to Jacksonville on Saturday night to take on the Jags. Now, Dan and Dave looked like they'd nailed this pick after the Chargers powered to a 27-point lead. They were romping to victory. But that's the beauty of this sport in this season. Teams don't seem to know how to die. Trevor Lawrence take a bow. He followed four interceptions with four touchdowns, one of the most improbable turnarounds in the NFL postseason history. It was a remarkable comeback win for the Jaguars and it ended with a 36-yard field goal on the final play. 31-30, to surely the Jag season has peaked. Miami at Buffalo next and the punts bounced back. They called the Bills and the Bills delivered. Kind of. They almost squandered a 17-0 lead at Orchard Park, scraping to a 34-31 win, but the Dolphins ran them very close. They led in the third quarter but didn't have enough to cement the upset. Now the highlight for me was a tasty little handbag match on the touchline in the second quarter. Everyone had a little shove after Josh Allen got into it with Wilkins, all after Allen had slung that interception. Now Dave will probably argue the result was down to Miami not having Teddy available. The pinky finger can make all the difference. Next up, Vikings versus Giants, and I've got to ask, what's the point? As if Liam isn't dragging out every last detail of this one with Dave elsewhere in the pod. All I will say is, Saquon Barkley is different gravy, Jones made the big plays when it mattered, the Vikings didn't, and Kirk's final roll of the dice made me go for a walk. The Giants deserved their victory, despite Darius Slayton making them wait for it in Minneapolis, 31 to 24. Congratulations, Liam. Congratulations, New York. Another game and another punt in tears. It's a cruel mistress, this sport. The Baltimore Ravens took on the Bengals in Cincinnati early Monday morning here in the UK. Now, Dan recorded the game and got up at 4 a.m. to watch before he started work. What a shit way to start the week for Dan. The Bengals defensive end Sam Hubbard stole the show with a 98-yard fumble return. 
tiebreak touchdown in the fourth quarter. It's the longest in NFL postseason history and set up a sensational win for the Bengals in front of 66,000 fans. 24-17 it finished. Another punts season is over. Finally for the roundup, maybe the GOAT's last dance. Tom Brady's Buccaneers scraped into the postseason after stitching a good run of wins. So Brady in the playoffs, you never know where that train could run, right? Wrong. Dallas were having nothing to do with it. Dak Prescott slung four touchdowns en route to a 31-14 victory. It's the first loss of Brady's career to Dallas in what could well be his final game. Post-match, he didn't give much away, and you wouldn't be that shocked to see him go again next season. For the Cowboys, they now face the 49ers next Sunday. The victory over Tampa was their first postseason road win in 30 years. I think they might be waiting for the second. And that completes the roundup of Wildcard Weekend. The punts are all geared up for what's next. Yeah, well done for wrapping that up. It was a, a bit of a tough one to, to wrap your wrap your mouth around, really, especially given that these two lost in the playoffs, and that makes it a bit sad for them, really. Um, look, let's start, shall we, with uh, the Seahawks at the Niners. I, I think we all saw this one come in. This was going to be a relatively straightforward one, but the Niners look stronger and stronger and stronger. Dave, they're a real threat now for, for making the Super Bowl, aren't they? It's weird. Their turns out their best quarterback is their first string quarterback. Uh, honestly, he's better than Jimmy, and uh, I've never had a high opinion of Trey Lance. So I'm always worried about his previous experience. He's a complete opposite. Um, Purdy basically is a three or four year veteran who played every game and holds records for the college he played for. Got taken last in the draft, and uh, I've said it before. Um, the NFL really need to start exploring how they assess quarterbacks because it, they don't do a very good job. Um, if he's been taken last, that means that every single team in this league passed over him, didn't even take him if they were desperate for a backup. Vikings are part of that. Um, but there's not a single team in the league who wouldn't have benefited by bringing in someone who can play the way he does. He's clearly learned the system quickly. Um I, I was hoping he would be something of a system quarterback, but he's not. He he can escape pressure up the middle. He can escape pressure on the edges. He's actually constantly got his eyes downfield looking for a throw. And if nothing's there, he makes a decision and, and takes it with his with his legs. Um, I've been very impressed. Um, weirdly, I, I saw Purdy uh, during the same combine that I watched last year, uh, and he was doing the same uh, test as, as Bailey's app. And at the time, I did like him. But I prefer Zap. Um, I was wrong as well. Even though I think Zap will go on to have a form of career, I think Purdy's going to be a, a starter next year for the, for the San Francisco 49ers. It's a tough sport, but I think there's no point in keeping Garoppolo. And if I was them, I would probably keep Trey Lance and let him recover from his injury, but I would also be happy enough to trade him if someone came along. Yeah, it's interesting. We were, That was one of the questions. There were two questions that I was going to ask. What's the nickname they give if you pick last in the draft? Mr. Mr. Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant. Mr. Irrelevant. He's loving that nickname. I'd be printing that on the back of my shirt uh -huh. immediately. Mr. I've... Irrelevant could be, could be leading the Niners to a Super Bowl, having been picked last in the draft. Incredible. The, the question that I was going to ask is... He can't stay now as third string for the 49ers. After what he's shown in the last three or four weeks since he's been called upon, Dan, surely there's a big trade coming for him. They won't, they won't trade him simply because he's, he's only one year into a rookie contract, so he costs them nothing to keep on the roster. And he, he'll, he'll be Trey Lance's backup next year, there's no doubt. I'll, I'll, at, at worst, they'll be in a camp battle for the number one spot. But the, if you remember, the Niners gave up an absolute bullion to go and get Trey Lance in that, for that pick. So they'll, they'll be... They'll be wanting to see what that looks like when he comes back from his injury. Um, we, we can't go away from the fact that, I know Dave said he's not a system quarterback. I, don't, I think we're starting to see that he's more than that. But in the first half, when they were, when they were losing to the Seahawks, the, the 49ers and, and the game plan was very, very basic. And it was very, it was very much keep the ball at the jumper and not make a mistake. It was actually a... It was the, the, the game switched, I think, on the, on the Elijah Mitchell touchdown pass when he escapes pressure. I think he breaks out of a tackle. I'm not sure who it was. And he, he's got the poise then to look up, finds Mitchell, they score a touchdown, they go ahead, they then go and score another three touchdowns after that um, and blow the game away. And, and after that, after that play, it, it felt like he took his own stabilizers off a little bit and 
and push the game forward. And you have got to remember with this team that they, they have got players all over the field. Now they've got Mitchell back, they've got McCaffrey, they've got Debo Samuel, they've got Brandon Ayuk, they've got George Kittle. The, these guys, all of them, can take a five-yard pass, 70 yards. Um, so the, the stats can look really good, and obviously it's a passing touchdown, but there's a lot of there's a lot of talent around him in San Francisco. There is probably the best offensive line in the game. There is probably the best offensive weapon group in the game, and there's probably the best offensive mind coach in the game. So I think we are seeing that he's more than more than a system quarterback, but he gets so much. He's in such a good position. Um, yeah. I think I think he is a. I think he's playing well, but it'll be interesting to see him next week in a in a real plot pressure situation but you, you you got to say they've been improved massively since Garoppolo went out um we never really saw Lance much um but they're a better team with with Purdy than Garoppolo I agree um what what I would say is I didn't think that there was a pass that was a turning point the turning point for me I was watching the game and I was quite enjoying the fact that the Seahawks were in it yeah. um the turning point came when Abrams attempted to twist the ankle of Debo Samuel at the end of the play yeah. for, for no good reason. And that really annoyed the 49ers. He made the 49ers angry. And I, I do think that you're right. He kind of changed their entire mentality yeah. and the aggression came seeping through and Purdy was much more aggressive. That, I think that was that just path. before CMC went diving in for his first, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, when he went charging down the left hand side for, for that, you know, single handed score, I think you're absolutely right, Dave. If, 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 if psychology is so important in this game, and you can give it away, the the if, when against you, there was a key stop that you made that probably no one noticed, but it was when we were keeping pace with you, and you basically kept us just stopped us once. But I knew, I knew that was gonna yeah. basically throw off a little, just enough from from Kirk's confidence in things, and that that last play against you guys, obviously he was hitting a guy who was five yards short of the sticks as opposed to, to throwing it downfield because there were two players near Jefferson. Aggression makes such a difference in this game because it makes you take the risk of decisions and yeah. it tends to be when teams are being aggressive that the game changes. It can go either way. You, you, you can see a team get taken off its game by being wound up too much by the opposition and they start making mistakes, giving away penalties, jumping too early. But I think if, you, if you're playing an excellent team who are playing within themselves, who are playing down to your level, trying to take cheap shots on, on top class players like that just yeah. isn't going to serve you in the long run. Yeah, and um, he, and he gets his revenge in the end, Debo, doesn't he, when he goes diving down the right-hand side? That's an absolutely magnificent catch as well and, uh, and run to, to score for him. Look, considering you've brought it up, let's move on to the Giants and the Vikings, shall we? Um, just let's take away all of the all of the bravado and me cheering the, 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 the Giants on. This was a really interesting game because... I think the New York Giants started to do something that they've not done all season long. Um, so before me and you weigh in on this, let's let's get the mediator's view on the game <laughs> and then me and you can take each other on, Dave. How's that? Uh, yeah, let, let's hear from Dan. <laughs> the mediator. Oh, God, you're brave. Um, no, I, I, we, we said that we, they played each other a few weeks ago and the, the, the Vikings had the finesse to change a game plan and come up with something different. So... And the Giants had played really well in that Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve game and, and only lost by three points. What, what actually happened was, it was the other way around. The Giants came in with a completely different offensive game plan. Um, and your defence, the Vikings defence, just couldn't cope. You couldn't keep up with them. Um, it, was, it was very much a ra Ravens look. So there was, there was half the line running one way with Jones, half the line running one way with Barkley. And you had no leadership in the defence to sort of take control of who was going where and where the ball was. And you couldn't stop them. And they just burnt the clock and burnt the clock and burnt the clock and played enough good defence. And like you said, the the odd key stop in the game just took your um, took your aggression out, and you could see the frustration coming from from Kirk. And once you know, once he's is in that mode, it's, he finds it difficult to sort of propel himself and bring up bring up the level of the players around him. For me, if Brian Dable wasn't coach of the year, he is now because that was a spectacular piece of coaching, and I think that was the difference in the game. But they, the Giants have a an all round an all round decent team. That they're, they're sort of okay at quarterback. They're okay on offense. They're okay on defense. They're okay on special teams. They are absolutely exceptional in the coaching department, and it does make a massive difference. I, I always look before before we go on to you two. I always look at two things in the playoffs, and it's two things that it's two words, and it's hot and healthy. 
So you, you've got to be one or two going into the playoffs to have a chance. You've either got to be a really healthy team or get healthy just going in, or you've got to be a really hot team going in. And I think the Giants are both. I think they've got some players back, some of the players are back on the offensive line, some players back on defence. Um, and so they've got healthy going into the playoffs, and I think they were playing their best football going into the playoffs. I think the 49ers are a similar sort of case. But for me, it was, it was, it was a bit of a surprise to see how well the Giants played. It, it, was, it was very disappointing, again, for me, Dave, to, to watch the Vikings not have a plan B. Um, and I think, I think the coaching staff needs to have a, a fairly long, hard look at themselves for me. Um, before we go into this, I'm just going to pause just for a second. And I'm trying to communicate with producer Bell using slight hand signals. And he's picked everything up on the desk uh, except the thing that I need to pick him up, which is the fact that the screen's disappeared and I can't see Dave anymore. So if you could just press low power mode for me, that'd be absolutely brilliant. And then I'll be able to see Dave again. Great, thanks very much. Uh, right, Dave, uh, now we can have a chat about this. Um, I'll let you go first. What did you make of the game, mate? So, <laughs> I think the easiest thing to do is to <laughs> read out a message about sent to a friend of mine who was asking me... Uh, what had happened? Um, his message was, I'm a defence, was it bad defence or bad calls? Um, my reply to that was, so, linebackers are too old and slow to cover. The safeties, Bynum mainly, were constantly out of position. It was bad coaching, bad roster construction and bad defending. The calls that they made were bad because they did nothing to mitigate the risks in the linebacker area. You talk us apart, but you won't do that to anyone else. Our defence is that bad. Like, Purely and simply, the heartbeat of the Zimmer defence with the Vikings was actually Anthony Barr. He was the one who called the defence. This year, a lot of those responsibilities have been handed over to Eric Kendricks and uh, he's just proven himself not to be up to the task. We brought in Hicks from Denver. He He's just looked old and slow. He can't go from sideline to sideline. Um, we have a rookie who potentially will be an upgrade on those next year, Asamoah. Um, he's a little bit frail in the frame for my liking. So I think we're going to be struggling against the run next year as well. Um, but more than anything, I think what summed it up was when uh, our nose tackle got to your running back four yards behind the line and he got carried over the line by Saquon Barkley. We're not strong enough. We're not tough enough. Um, there's not enough attitude. There's not enough aggression to compensate for the physical uh, attributes which are lacking. Um, I am astounded that Ed Donatel Tell is still employed today. I, I, I thought he was going to get fired in the immediate aftermath. I mean, the Chargers have fired their offensive coordinator, and he still put 30 points on the board. Um, it's not... Always Donatel's fault. Sometimes the offense lets us down, but Kirk Cousins played a perfectly good game apart from that final throw. It, the, that that was tip. That was the most Kirk Cousins yeah. throw of all time. Um, it just sums up where his head goes when he's under pressure. Um, that's why you're never going to win anything because he will always go back to to, to what his default setting is. Um, but. I was impressed with the Giants. I was particularly impressed with Daniel Jones, mainly because we look and made him look like Joe Montana. Um, but again, like good luck against the Eagles. It's not going to be the same way. No. Um, they actually have a defence that isn't 31 in yards, 32 in touchdowns, and is the first team in NFL history to finish with a record better than 12 and four and actually have a negative point differential. It's just, it's astounding what we've done this year bearing in mind that the warning signs have been there all the way through. It's not as though no one was calling for the head of Donatel as early as week five. Um, the game against the Eagles in week two was something of a disgrace. Second half, they didn't put any points on the board. And people keep doing that. They keep looking at breaking the game up in, into stages. Anyone who's watched the NFL for long knows that once the team's got the lead, they take their foot off the gas, they start playing prevent defence, they stop playing with that aggression. And so you can keep them off the board when they're not really trying to score. They're just trying to kill the clock and win the game, put their players at less risk. Uh, yeah, it, it was an annoying game. And yet, I'm kind of glad it's over. Because <laughs> I don't have to worry about them anymore. I am... Um... Uh, Looking forward to the draft. Did um, did you hear him breathe in the last 
I thought he was minutes. just trying to talk till next season yeah, started. I, I think he was just trying to I was, prevent... I was trying to eat up all of a conversation <laughs> time for this game and hope that Liam wouldn't be able to get in a word in edgeways. Can we move on, please? No, we cannot. <laughs> uh, I think that... we sent. There was a message sent in that... We've got a little WhatsApp group. And there was a message sent in the WhatsApp group that made me go back and watch it for a second time. When Dave said that he thought that the Vikings' defence had made the Giants look good... I wanted to go back and just double check that I hadn't misread the game, whether I'd like got my giant tinted spectacles on or what have you. But actually, I think um, I think the Giants threw something at the Vikings this weekend that we've not seen from them all season long, and that was Daniel Jones using his legs. That there is a, a second part to that though, where. Daniel Jones was given the opportunity to use his legs, and that was by uh, players like Darius Slayton, Hodges, James, all making plays and all forcing safeties to stay deep and the secondary to drop off. And the second that they did that, Daniel Jones has got the game management, the game wherewithal, to take advantage with his feet. And, and when you've got Daniel Jones taking advantage with his feet and Saquon Barkley making the yardages that he was making for the Giants, it was always going to be a, a positive, and I think, I, I think I, I don't want I don't I don't necessarily agree that it was just the Vikings making the Giants look good. I think what the the play calls, the way that Dayball's gone about it, the the way that Slayton Hodges James all kept that secondary honest was actually credit to the Giants. Now, admittedly, I'm not sure that if they'd have played that game against the Bills or they played that game against the the Eagles, and we'll see this, won't we, next week, whether they would have had the same result. Maybe there is an element of that game plan working very specifically against the Vikings. Regardless, you've got to, I think you've got to give the Giants credit for executing the way that they executed. And brilliant that they're through to to the divisional round I think that's probably as far as they'll go I can't see them beating the Eagles um the numbers uh on the bookies which we'll talk about once we get to previewing the games a little bit later are um uh, you know are interesting um yeah uh, right we've all three had our say let's move on shall we before we get any further uh anybody want to say anything about the Dallas Cowboys and Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, Bucks look really, really old. I think they they Brady were, looked really, really old. Were, the whole team, that the yeah. defense looked really, really old. They they started off quite strong in the first first five minutes. They were all over the place. After that, they were gassed. That we've seen that from the Bucks defense all year. The Ravens, if you remember in that first first game, ran them ragged, and they just capitulated in the yeah. second half. Um, we we we. I thought they might get a bit of a response from a championship team. They had certain players coming back, like Jensen coming back. You thought they were just going to get a championship mentality in. They just, they just, they were a bit, they were a step slow. Yeah, never um, And I, th- I, th- I think, I think Brady's done. The, the Cowboys now be, will now be boosted, and everyone will say how well they played. I, I wasn't overly impressed with them. Um, I know they've just battered somebody, but it, they, they, to me, they look like. I don't think they'll be a good team, um, but you know, they, they did the job last night, and I, I think they took care of business, even though the kicker looks awful. Anything you want to add, Dave? Just the fact that the kicker looked awful, missed four extra points, but made his fifth one, and apparently that saved his job. I messaged um, Richard Graves today and told him they should uh, they should apply for a loan deal for Justin Tucker for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Uh, not much to say about the Chargers and the Jags. N- nothing really interesting happened in that game, did it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Involuntary noises. Uh, yeah, we covered that with with Rennie though, so we'll, you'll be hearing most of that later or earlier, depending on where it ended up getting. No, it's, it's coming. It's coming up very, very shortly, Dave. It's yeah. almost like we're turning you into some kind of podcast presenter. This that was very was a very good segue. Dolphins, Bills. I, I can I just go say something about the the Jags game? Yeah, um, that I'm. I, I've been a. There's a, there's, a, there's a split of people who watch the NFL who are either pro Justin Herbert or really anti Justin Herbert. Yeah. There's a lot of things that says he's a an Instagram quarterback and type thing. He makes flashy plays. I think he's a really good quarterback. But I watched him quite closely against Lawrence. And although Lawrence had a fairly shaky start, three picks in the first for, quarter. For me, there's there was only one Hall of Fame quarterback on that field, and it was it wasn't Justin Herbert. And I think Lawrence was a cut above. 
I think he, he is he is the next generation of this league. I think he was absolutely incredible in that second half, and he's done that a few times this year now. And I think he can play at a level that, that Justin Hibble will never get to. Do you think that the consistency will come with Lawrence once he gets a couple more seasons under his belt? Because he was loose in the first quarter. He also needs better wide receivers. I mean, they, they've got Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. Um, and, I, you know, they, they've, they've signed Calvin Ridley from the Falcons, who's, who's serving his suspension for, for betting last year. Um, so he'll be their wide receiver one. I, just the, the, the threat of him with um, with Lawrence next year could be just could be absolutely scary. Uh, Etienne's a really good player. Mm. Um, they, they, they've, they've put a, I mean they've had plenty of high picks, so they should have put a decent roster together. But I think he'll only get better and more comfortable in, in that in that system. Peterson and him clearly understand each other really well. Um, uh, for me, he he was the player of the weekend. Yeah. Anything you want to add on this game, Dave? No, he showed a great deal of resilience. It was impressive. I think the, the, the Ridley signing is actually an interesting one. Mm. Uh, what I throw in there is the fact that the NFL suspensions make no sense. You no. ban a man for an entire year for betting on his own team to win. You allow you ban a man for eleven games for being accused of sexual assault by nearly thirty women. Come on. Yeah, two hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Less said about that, the better, really, I think. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins, Bills, much of a muchness, really. That kind of, it was tighter than I thought it was going to be, but I think the Bills were the better side on the day and probably still living a little bit on uh, on emotion and, and that, that coming through. So, well done, the Bills. We'll see how you get on against the Bengals uh, next week. And finally, Ravens, Bengals. Um, do, do you want to have some, a say on this before we move on? No or comment. would you like to forget completely? I'm, no comment. I... I'd like to say something about oh, this game. I knew you would. I love you, Dave. Um, wouldn't have happened if Lamar had played. Yeah, I would have uh, played. Number one. Yeah. Number two, uh, Hubbard, absolutely cracking edge rusher. When he came out in the draft, I was surprised he wasn't taken higher than he was. He's got always had a high engine. He's always had a, a really good athletic profile. Um, <laughs> he's realising his potential. Um for whatever reason, certain pass rushes seem to get taken later than they should. Uh, Thibodeau, the, the yeah. Giants pass rusher, yeah. by far the best pass rusher in last year's draft. I yep. think it was actually association with a, with a um, not Bitcoin, but an, but another crypto, another cryptocurrency. yeah cryptocurrency that he was promoting while he was at university. Apparently, that drove him down draft boards. That's the kind of player you want to try and get. Someone who is basically being discredited for no good reason. Um, he's clearly got a business acumen about him and he's clearly excellent at football. I think, think the Giants got an absolute steal there. Uh, you being punished sort of, for wanting that, to make yeah. a bit of money. No, well, that, that sort of individual thinking and that sort of unique unique character does put NFL executives off, believe it or yeah. not. So, he, so anyone with that sort of... And, he, and he's an outspoken guy. Did you see him when he was he was criticised for the, doing the snow angel next to Nick Foles when Nick Foles was injured? <laughs> And yeah, he yeah. said, "Well, I don't, I don't respect the opinion of uh, the of Doug Peterson. Who is he? Type of thing." And it, it was, it was so dismissive. But he's, he's clearly just a character, and it's great to have those characters in the I league. But you, would you want to spend the, a first overall pick on him? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you see, Randy Moss fell for the same reason. It's why I ended up as a Viking because he had that same air of arrogance about him. Just wanted to lose I, regularly. Yeah, I, I think if you can, if you can live up to it, then I think that's an advantage because. Whilst everybody else is feeling like they can't survive, they can't do something whilst they're defeated, those people with that independent streak of arrogance won't be the ones who go, nah, it's just a situation we can dig ourselves out of. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it borders on greatness, but it also borders on complete failure. So it is it is a gamble, um, which is why they fall, because... There are GMs who won't want to risk their reputation based on taking someone who's got known issues that early. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of Dave Keane, the utter punt with an independent streak of arrogance. Uh, right, that's the reviews done. Let's get stuck into the preview, shall we? It's the divisional round. This is where we find out who's who's the real runners and riders are. This is where we separate the wheat from the chaff, the men from the boys. We'll start with the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Kansas City Chiefs. At Saturday, this will be at half past nine. This has got... Right, I'm going to do it. I do this every week, don't I? I? I've done it again. This has got Chiefs written all over it, Dan. 
I, I tend to agree. Yes, I think finally. They've, you never know how they're going to come out of their bye week. It's always a strange time. And the, the Jaguars coming off such a victory will go in there with, with all the confidence in the world. You know, they, they, they turned over the Titans to get into the playoffs in the last week. I think. So they've, played two, they've won two playoff games in the last two weeks. Let's make no bones about it. And they've, they've scraped through a little bit. Although that, that second half performance against the Chargers, I think, would be anybody. And, and I will say that. So they've got the they've got the ability to score thirty points against any team in this league. Um, the problem is, I think the Chiefs have got the potential to score fifty, um, and they are really starting to feel themselves. The Chiefs they've finally fixed their running game. Clyde edwards alaire has disappeared out of existence. I know he's coming back from IR, I think, but he's gone, not going to get in ahead of Pacheco and McKinnon. McKinnon's on a run of, I think, eight touchdown passes in eight games, which is just unheard of. And in their last game, watching Mahomes just flutter the ball around and do pirouettes in the backfield and they're doing spinner to come out of the huddle, they're, they're a team that is full of confidence. They're at home. They expect to win. Um, and, I, and Andy Reid off a bye week is, I think, unbeaten. I, don't, I can't remember the last time he lost. He's an absolute mastermind. And he'll have had a good look at this Jags defence uh, and what the Chargers did to them in the first half of that game. Um, and with the flexibility of the Chiefs, um, and their ability to hit you from every direction. I, I, I can't see anything else, but I, I do think the Jags will, will score a lot of points. So this, this is an over, over, over points game because even at 40 points to seven with 10 minutes to go, it could end up 40 to 30. Um, the, the player to watch for me in this is, is, is Tony, Kadarius Tony, um, who the Giants let out the building for a third round conditional pick, I think. He clearly didn't settle in New York. I don't think they really liked his character, but the, the, the Chiefs have gradually brought him more and more into the game plan. Um, and he's starting to have a real effect, running the ball out the backfield, catching the ball out the backfield, catching the ball deep. Um, he's a real X factor for them. So watch him. Um, but the Chiefs, for me, look like they're destined for at least the next round of this. And I'll take them at home against the Jags, although I think the Jags will put up a fight and, and score some points. And it will be a cracking game to watch to open the weekend. Dave? I've been there when a team hasn't had any chance of, well, I've not been there live, but I wish I had been, but I've been watching live, where a team had no chance of winning uh, the, the, the miracle in Minneapolis. The uh, following week, we went out against the Eagles and absolutely stank out of the building. Um, these emotional victories where you shouldn't get them do have a history in the NFL of meaning that you then go and lose your next game. Um, what I would say is, I think the manner of the way they came back could hold them in good stead. Mm. Um, but Dan's right, the Chiefs score so quickly, um, they'll have to keep pace with them. And I think that it can almost shell shock a team when they've, when they've done something amazing and incredible, uh, when suddenly they find themselves in an even worse situation than they were in previously. Um, and it's really hard to replicate that kind of comeback. Um, so I, I can't really see a reason why the Jags would win. What I would argue is if they do go there and win, it will be because Trevor Lawrence has just put in a, a game which is worthy of a number one overall pick um, and potentially of, of, of a future best quarterback in the NFL. Um, his profile when he came out in the draft was as a generational talent. Just goes to show how bad Meyer was that he, he nearly ruined him because it's not taken Peterson that long to put him back together. Um, and like I say, the, the key thing for me in all of this is you throw four picks. I know what would happen with Kirk Cousins. Like, he'd go into his shell and would be thrown. Well, we get there's to see no it a couple of times a year, don't way. we? Don't yeah, yeah there's, there's no way on earth that, that like, any normal quarterback would be able to recover psychologically from that. I think Lawrence is special because his mentality, he, he believes he's the best. That arrogance came across in the draft as well. I think it nearly caused him not to go number one because people yeah. questioned his work ethic. Um, his talent's unreal. Uh, and I think he's starting to piece it together at pro level. The game's starting to slow down for him. And if he starts performing at the pro level to the same level he did in college, the Jags are going to be hard to beat for a long time to come. Yeah, I would agree. Um, a pub for this one, or are we doing pub for Sunday? Um, no, the pub are saving up their offers now for the Super Bowl. Ooh. Which um, we'll, we'll talk will... about that a little bit later, then, uh -huh. shall we? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There we go. Right, some uh, that's what we call a little tease. Only because exactly. the games are much later, so this yeah. is half nine on Saturday, the first game, and the the next get the first game on Sunday is eight o'clock. So it's yeah. 
it's just a bit late for this time. So um, just to give you a bit of a clue of what's coming up, um, Utter Ponce is brought to you in association with Endzone Kit. So we're going to finish off the AFC Divisional Games. Then we're going to hear from uh, Renee and Simon, who run Endzone Kit. And once we've heard from them, we'll come back and we will preview the NFC Games as well. And then, of course, uh, we'll round the podcast off with our Utter Ponce of the Week. So before we hear from Renee and Simon from endzonekit.co.uk, let's do Cincinnati Bengals against the Buffalo Bills, shall we? Bills? No. No? Bengals? No, I, yeah. I, for me, the, the, the I came out of last weekend and my, my view on the Bills had changed. Um, they, they are making silly mistakes, especially in the red zone. And it's become now, it's not something that's a one-off. It's, it's happened a few times. We actually said last week it's the thing that'll get him killed. And it very nearly did against Skylar Thompson mm. and um, the Miami Dolphins. Now, this is Joe Burrow and Joe Chase and the, the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I know the Bengals, you can say the Bengals didn't look impressive against the Ravens on Sunday night. The Ravens' defence was designed to stop that Cincinnati offence, and it did. Um, they had the ultimate game plan. They had the personnel. They had everything right. The Bills secondary is awful, and the Dolphins pulled it apart. So the strength of the Cincinnati offense is going up against the absolute weakness of the Buffalo Bills. That is scary for me, if I'm a Bills fan. I, I, I like the Bills. I've got a soft spot for the Bills. I've got a family that are Bills fans. I've, I've been on the Bills train most of the year, um, and I've tipped them to I tipped them to beat the Rams in the first game, tipped them to beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead. I, I, I'm picking the Bengals in this, and I think it's just because when it comes down to it, they won't make a mistake. Um, and I think the Bills will. I know a man who's going to argue with you. Dave? Oh. Josh Allen, live from Buffalo. Look, everything Dan said is accurate. It's just the, the Bengals O-line is dead. They've lost three starters over the past few weeks. Um, it kind of negates the, the Bills missing Von Miller. Um, you're right about... Alan, his decision making in the red zone has been been terrible. Now, what is interesting about him is it's an issue that he had in college. It was an issue that he had early in his career with the Bills as well, and and he, he moved away from it. But who was his coach when he moved away from it? Kevin O'Connell. No, Hello, it was the Brian ball. Dayball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> I do think there is a massive element of when a coach moves on. It can have a positive impact or it can have a negative impact. Mm, and for me, with, with, with Alan, I think he's lacking that little bit of um, roundedness in his ear, keeping him calm, stopping him from trying too hard when, when he doesn't need to yet. Um, the, the, the picky for against the Vikings, I mean, come on, Peterson took it. Everybody, <coughs> it was because everyone knew he was going to give him a chance. And that that's what he's been doing all year. He's been giving teams a chance. Um I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a high-scoring game. Um, and I'm interested to see who comes out on top in this every year duel for the next few years between Allen and, 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 and Joe Burrow. Of those two quarterbacks, I prefer Joe Burrow. I think he's a more traditional uh, player. I think, he's, I think he thinks more and quicker than Allen. I think Allen's got all the physical traits, mind, and... They're both amazing. Um, but I, I will always back Burrow to come out on top just simply because I think he's got the mental edge. I love Joe Burrow's resiliency. I love his ability to get absolutely panned, sacked five, six times a game and still bounce back and pick you apart um, from the pocket or whether he's been flushed out. I think he's, um, I think he's excellent. Uh, right, value in these two. D Jacksonville against Kansas City Chiefs. Where's the value, Dan? I'd go Chiefs win over 52 points. Yeah. There's a double, I think it's 7-4. to four. Wow. Okay. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, Buffalo Bills? Bengals plus five points. Wow. Yeah. Plus five? Yeah. They're, they're, they're on the road, aren't they? So that, that's three points that Buffalo get. And I think it's... I think I think it, it is it a will close be game. line injuries, mate. But that, that'll be why they've moved line. In, in the ill-fated game a few weeks ago, when these two played for a quarter, the Bengals didn't have much of an O-line then, and it, they were just moving. They were getting the ball out in under two and a half seconds, and it negated it. And they were they were completely bossing that game before the game was stopped. Um, it's going to be a highly emotional game, I think, for both teams. But and I, and I think that just negates the, the the weaknesses on the O-line. I think the speed that they can get the ball out. Um, for me, the Bengals will, will win. And if I can get five points on it, I'll take it. Um, 
before we round this off, there's just one final question about Bengals Bills, and that is whether the Demar Hamlin incident has any impact on this game. Dave, what do you think? So he's still on oxygen, as I understand it, um, and he's given the team well wishes. And you know, he's been as much of a team player as he can be based on the circumstances that he's got. The issue of I, I was, he's been a fine safety. He's been a very yeah. good safety. I think not having his talent on the field yeah. um, could could have an impact here. I, I, it's also the fact that they've had the the, the, the game back after he went out. Yeah. They they. They got that. It's the emotional thing as well. Again, it's like where you build up something so much in your head that you burn off so much of your of your of your magnesium, your potassium, all the things that we burn when we're stressed out, and then suddenly relieved. You forget to top up those levels. It's really hard, and I, I, I just, I just think that the. the I'm I'm going with the Bengals as well. I think the Hamlin not being there doesn't help the Bills. Um, and yeah, this this particular incident, I think it does impact the game, but I don't think it impacts it in a good way at all for the Bills. Unfortunately, um, I think they'll miss him. I think they'll miss him in this game. I think the Bengals have, will, have, will come into this with a massive chip on the shoulder. The final point on it that they they feel like they should have had a chance at the number one overall seeding. That was taken away with this in the NFL made. They're the team that actually came out of that worse. Um, the Bills and the Chiefs, if they get there, will have to play at a neutral venue. I think that's been announced as Atlanta. Um, if if it's a Bills uh, Chiefs, but the, the the Bengals were taken out of contention for that number one uh, overall seed. I think they're going with a massive chip on the shoulder, and I think they'll make a massive statement on the, on Sunday. <laughs> As you know, Utter Punts is proudly sponsored by Endzone Kit, one of the best kit suppliers out there. They're absolutely fantastic. If you haven't checked out endzonekit.co.uk, you absolutely need to go away and do that. Don't forget 15% discount at checkout if you use the code PUNTS. And really pleased to say that this week, because Renee is over in, uh, in the UK, we've got them on the podcast. It's Renee and Simon. How are you guys? Yay! Yeah, we're good. good. We're yeah. good. How are you doing? Yeah, really well, thank you. Really, really well. Um, look, I, I suppose the, the first thing is for you to introduce yourselves and maybe just tell us a little bit about your history and why it is that you decided to set up Endzone Kit. Uh, okay, I guess I'll start. I'm Renee. I am from Denver, Colorado. And um, when I first started coming over here, I noticed that People in the UK don't get the chance to buy stuff that's used um, for a better deal. They also don't have access to a lot of baby stuff, kids, women's quirky things. Um, it's only what you can get on the NFL Europe site, which is kind of crap, really. Um, and it's all about men's brand new current jerseys. That's about all you can find. So um, we decided that we uh, would like to offer what we can find in the US, like at uh, thrift stores, yard sales, um, wherever else that I can find it. So. Um, uh, uh, end zone kit was born and yeah. uh, operates from the south coast yeah i mean being a, an nfl fan for all my life um bringing up three girls i you know i didn't have any um, any money so um that's always <laughs> stuck with me and yeah. it, our, our passion is to uh, basically try and help the people that don't necessarily have money for 100 pound jerseys but if they've only got a fiver in their pocket then we can you know we can help so that's what mm -hmm. we're what's what we're about right uh, I absolutely love this concept, and we and we talk about it every week on Utter Punts as well about how much we we love it and how much the stuff that you can get on there is so different. Um, it, it's absolutely brilliant. How do you feel about how Denver have gone on this season, then, uh, Renee? You <laughs> absolutely <laughs> delighted. Don't well, ask her that. I think I had my rant before, <laughs> yeah. uh, but <laughs> I wasn't wasn't too thrilled. But we'll see what happens with a new coach and um, if we can get a little bit better next year. Ever the optimist in Russ, we still <laughs> trust. Pearl. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little more jaded than he is. I, I, nearly, I, I nearly wore a Wilson jersey. Yeah. yeah, I've been a Denver fan for a little longer, have so you, I know how, how, how we have you not easy. written him off yet like the rest of us? No, I've not written him off. <laughs> I, not completely. I, you're cantankerous and argumentative. <laughs> Why am I not surprised, Dave? <laughs> well, look, let, let, let's put it another way. It was a brand new quarterback with a brand new head coach who hadn't been a head coach before, uh, hadn't called plays before, and lo and behold, it didn't work. 
doesn't necessarily mean he'll be as broken next year if I actually get someone in who can do the job. Um, if, they build, if they build up around and, him, then it'll be good. I mean, you've already got an excellent wide receiver core. You just need him fit and healthy. Uh, need to invest in the O-line because he does need a lot of protection, but I'd still rather have him than Kirk, and I don't care how anyone feels about that, even on their com- contracts as well. Wow. Okay. Well, that's that's a big, strong statement. But uh, yeah, I, I think also the new ownership had something to do with it too. Everything was new and it's hard to gel everything like that. But I think the owners are committed um, to trying to make a better team. And, you know, the, the uh, Denver uh, kind of history of greatness <laughs> that we've had throughout the years. And they're just trying to get that back. So, yeah, I do have hope. What what did you make of last weekend in the NFL? Who are you looking forward to seeing this weekend? Oh boy! Well, I'm I hate to say it, but I'm kind of looking forward to, to seeing what the Chiefs can do again. Um, I I know they're basically going to pulverize the the Jags, <laughs> but maybe not any given Sunday, mm-hmm. right? But it'll be good to see the top two uh, come back, you know, from their bye week and see what can can happen. The big guns. Uh, also, yeah. I have to say, I really was super. Im- I hate the Cowboys, okay, because they broke my little preteen heart when they beat the Broncos in Super Bowl twelve. Um, but really, they were amazing, and I was like, "Wow, I just never seen them this cohesive, you know, and gel like that." And Dak played with such confidence; it was amazing. So I'm kind of interested to see what they're going to do as well when they play the Niners. That is going to be a good game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was quite an interesting week. We'll, you know, we'll do the roundup in the in the podcast um, a little bit later, but. I found some of the results completely... I mean, the Jags' result was crazy, wasn't it? Absolutely nuts to see how they went on. It yeah. went the way we expected in the first half. I wasn't then... talking to you. I thought you were. <laughs> I always assume you I are. I talked to you later about this. I'm talking to <laughs> our actually, esteemed guests actually, about this now. you look over. You looked over on my screen. Carry on. <laughs> well, uh, we we heard your predictions, okay, because we listened to the podcast on the way um, in, in the van, in the end zone kit van at some point. <laughs> I forgot what we were doing, but we were driving either from London to here or here to London. Listen to it. And you guys both said San Diego, or San Diego, listen to me. We all said Chargers. And Simon's like, Never in a million years. <laughs> we did, we did caveat 20, it with twenty-seven that, nil. We look good. Yeah, we did caveat it with <laughs> at some like, point oh, they're going to charge it, and uh, yeah. we, we got it right, didn't we? I suppose. I was wondering how many people actually left the stadium at half time in disgust. Yeah, and, uh, you know, hey, biggest few. comeback ever. So. You had to pay a lot for playoff tickets. So the I think it's as well this this season more than any. There's been there's been such a long number of comebacks. So I don't know if I think you'd always think there's a bit of a chance, wouldn't you? But. It was it was an extreme comeback with the with the way they played in the first half. Yeah, it was. We're, um, um, we will talk about this if we haven't already talked about it on the podcast. We're, just in case you're wondering what's going on, we're pre-recording this interview before we actually do the podcast, so we might already have spoken about this, and then we're going to talk about it again. Uh, look, before we let you go, Renee and Simon, and thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us. Um, is there anything that we need to know about promotions, etc., on Endzone Kit? And I know you're running something to do with the playoffs, aren't you? We are. Um, it's, it's our I think second annual or possibly third annual um, playoff uh, progressive sale. So what happens is if your team reaches the playoffs, they automatically get 10% off. And then um, if they go to the beyond the wildcard weekend, which is the divisionals, um, they will get 15% off. So right now there's uh, eight teams that have 15% off. Then after that, if they go to the conference round, they get um, 18% off. And then if they go all the way to the Super Bowl, it's 20%. And then on top of that, you get the punts discount for 15% off of that. Wow. So basically you're stealing stuff from us. <laughs> but- <laughs> yeah, look, what we desperately need now is for the uh, New York Giants to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. And then I am cleaning you out. Oh, really? That's what's going to happen. <laughs> well, that, and that I'm hoping that will happen because I'm <laughs> really not an Eagles fan. No. So we've got a lot of the stock, though. We've got a lot of Eagles stuff. So yeah, we do, we do. But well, we, maybe... we also have some Giants things that you know you could have. Yeah, maybe we need to... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> we will wait and sale. see. We will wait and see. Look, and finally, the will be, um, on the website already discounted, and then once you use your 15, percent then it's on top of that. Amazing. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so get yourself to endzonekit.co.uk and make sure you take advantage of that. Finally. Um, we are opening the floor to you both to nominate your utter punt of the week and we will include it in the podcast a little bit later. Oh, okay, great. Do you want to start? Because you've got a punt for yours. It just so happens I found this. This is my nominated one because I didn't even see that. Who that is? 
Oh, oh okay. Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons. Yeah. Yeah. Cowboys Parsons. Yeah. Why, why would you nominate him? Well, from his behavior on the game, you know, in the game. You mean trying to be part of the huddle? Trying to get in the huddle, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jensen, Jensen knocking him down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a fair nomination. What about you, Renee? Oh, m mine was, um, I, I was a little nonplussed by the John Harbaugh interview with uh, Melissa Stark, you know, when he was just like, let, uh, oh, we'll just see how the game plays out. Thanks. Okay, bye. You know, I thought it was really dismissive and just kind of rude. But uh, at first I thought it might have been a little bit sexist, but then I thought, you know, I've seen him do that to male reporters yeah. too. So I don't think it's necessarily a sexist thing. I th just don't think he likes to talk before the game's over. No, uh, as, a, yeah. as a journalist of, of a fair few years now, it is my least favorite thing to do is to speak to managers but just before the game or during the game because they just do not want to talk to you and it makes it, yeah. it, makes it very, very difficult. Uh, look, Renee, Simon, thank you so much for joining us on Utter Punts. Uh, don't forget endzonekit.co.uk. The, the sale is ongoing and 15% at checkout if you use the code PUNTS. Right then, on to the NFC Divisional Round. It was lovely hearing from Renee and Simon, wasn't it? Um, really good to get them on the podcast. Don't forget, punts at checkout gives you an additional 15% off. I know I've said that a lot, but I'm going to keep punching that home. You want some gear, 15% off at checkout if you use the code punts. Uh, on to the NFC Divisional Round. New York Giants at Philadelphia Eagles. There's only one team winning this one, boys, and it's the Philadelphia Eagles. If I were you... Yeah, I would take advantage of the end zone kit offer now, now. and get 30% <laughs> off all your giant stuff. <laughs> that's, my, that's my tip, and that's yeah. all I'm saying about it. I think that's fair enough. Dave, this one um, this one should go the Eagles' way. They are, we've, we've said it so many times this season, they're so good both sides of the ball. They've got a quarterback that can exploit you uh, through the air, on the ground. Um, they, they are exceptional, and the, the New York Giants have got their work cut out for them here. It's it's that Philadelphia, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I'm just rooting for the monsoon to come through and absolutely soak all the Eagles <laughs> fans. That's all I'm interested in. Anything bad that happens to Eagles fans, beyond them getting physically harmed, I'm not going that far. But just just either have a terrible experience. I'd like the stadium to black out, the, the game to be cancelled, and for them none of them to be able to make it to the rearranged fixture. That's what I want to happen. Like honestly, mate, some really good insight into the game. So I think it's very likely. <laughs> Uh, I think we, we've already touched on this, haven't we, where we, we don't think that the New York Giants can pull the same rabbit out of the hat two weeks in a row, especially against a side, uh, D Dave said this earlier, especially against a side that is so good defensively. We're probably going to have to see something different from Brian Dayball to, to, to try and find a way through. Jalen Hurts is back. He's had a couple of weeks back in the saddle. I, I just, I can't see it going any other but way. But he is hurt. So uh, Sirianni, after the after the game, he came back for the last game, uh, obviously to get them the number one seed. And after that, Sirianni gave a really funny interview. I don't know if you've heard it, where he said, it's not just that he was in pain, he was in excruciating pain and he still played. And it was sort of like bigging him up. But actually, if he's in excruciating pain, he shouldn't be playing. Two weeks ago, he's going to be in pain this week. Yeah. Um, so he's not going to be 100%. So I understand, I know what you're saying, but the Eagles aren't coming into this game in any sort of good form. They've, they've lost a few games, obviously, when Hurts wasn't playing. They've had a few more injuries to deal with, which look like they've healed now, but they yeah. may start slow in this game. Hold off a bye. Yeah, exactly. And and a lot of pressure. A, a and that, bye might help, though. But they, Just the help them heal. It could help. And it could, I'm only thinking of ways that it could be a less, Thanks, a less one sided yeah. game. So it could hinder. And let me say about this Philadelphia crowd, if the Giants go 14 nothing up and it's a, a fumble recovery or something like that and the, the Giants are going, this Eagles crowd will turn against oh, this they team. They are fickle, yeah. They, are, yeah, they, yeah. they will turn and that will become a very poison environment. Now, I know I'm building a picture of and if this and if this and if this, but this Giants team isn't going to fa be phased by going to Philadelphia. You've been there already this year. You played well with your backups against them. Um, you're going to have a game plan for, the, for, for them. You've got two games of tape on them. You're going to have a game plan. You're healthy, you're fit, you're confident. You've got a running game, which is, is, is tantamount to gold in the playoffs. Um, can you keep this closer than seven points? Yeah. Probably. Uh, there's a fantastic, if you go searching for this online, uh, we're talking about a Philadelphia crowd, right? Um, Bill Burr absolutely dismantles Philadelphia. Dismantles Philadelphia. Because 
that this huge comedy gig and they basically booed every comedian off stage to to the you get sort of 10 minutes and they record of three nobody had made it past three minutes Bill Burr comes out and literally just goes on a 10 minute no holds barred run about how terrible Philadelphia is and how awful the inhabitants of Philadelphia are and by the time he gets to the end of it, not only have they started booing him, but he just hasn't stopped. They actually applauded him off the stage. He's absolutely genius. Have you seen it, Dave? Yeah, I have, yeah. And um, I massively respect Bill Burr for, for doing that. Uh, they were toxic by the end of it. A few of them started applauding him. The majority of them didn't because they didn't understand what had happened. They, were, they weren't smart enough to understand it. It was it was it was the clever Eagles fans, like the four of them, that applauded him. Um, <laughs> Not a fan of Philadelphia Eagles fans, are you, Dave? No. no you feel no, the no, same no, way no, about no, them no. as Dan does about the Steelers. Well, like when you know that when there's a big game in Philadelphia, the police literally go around and lube up the lampposts to try and stop people from climbing, climb, climbing them. Yeah. Like that sums up Philadelphia. They are they take everything incredibly seriously, including Rocky. Apparently, it was a mortal insult when the Vikings fans dressed Rock, Rocky, their hero, in a Viking shirt. Not a oh look at that, they like our hero. No, it's an insult. How dare you? We're going to kill all your fans. You yeah. didn't mean Can't it. Stand I mean, you didn't mean it. Can't as an stand insult. Them. Didn't you? That's it's not to get away from the point. See, it's different. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I I see the Philadelphia fans and the atmosphere and the sort of poison thing that they have, and it makes me want to go. I I I'd love to be in that sort of atmosphere. It's one of the places I want to go and watch a game. Oh mate, I am part of that kind of atmosphere with the soccer team that I support, and I love them very much. Um, but I hate the Eagles. <laughs> I like Fair the I like the Eagles, and I, I you know, I've, I've liked the Eagles all year. We've bigged them up all year, um, and I, I think they'll win yeah. this game. I, I, we sort of predicted that they'd probably get to the the championship game and, and lose. Um, of all our season predictions, there's only really one of us with our two teams left that can make the Super Bowl. Just saying. Um, who's that? Oh, well, that's because you picked the two favourites. That would have been easy. Well, I thought the Niners were favourites, were they? At that fail. point, they were behind the Cowboys and the Vikings. I think at one point. Anyway, we're getting away from the point. I'd like the Vi- I'd like the, I'd like the Eagles to lose. Mate. So we the Niners have got more of a chance of winning the NFC and and the Chiefs to win the AFC and it'll be a Super Bowl with the 49ers and the Chiefs and the 49ers I, will win. I can't well, remember. It. Can you remember who everybody picked? Who did yeah, you, pick? you had the Eagles and the Ravens. Which yeah. is a terrible decision on your yeah. part. Shocking. And Dave had the Packers although, and the Ravens. So. Although I'd still be in with a shout. I did have Lamar him. not got injured. That's just that's frustrating. Oh, uh, two biggest Violet. underachievers in the entire league, the, the, the Packers and the Ravens. Yeah. Kirk Cousins. Um <laughs> <laughs> underachieving I said I didn't say achieving exactly what he should I just it's my response to anything you say I would suggest overachieving this season uh, Dallas Cowboys at the San Francisco 49ers is the final game that we are previewing on this podcast um, I, the Dallas have done well but they are about to run into a juggernaut aren't they I think so. The bookies don't, but, and it, and it's mainly because the Cowboys played so look like they played so well against Tampa, right? So they and they and they're a well supported team. So people will think the Cowboys can go to San Francisco and get an upset. And I get it; they've got a good defense and they can run the ball and they've got good players on offense. But um, I can assure you, the San Francisco 49ers defense is vastly better than the Buccaneers defense. Yeah. And I can assure you that the San Francisco 49ers offense is supremely better than the. Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense. Yeah. Um, I, Dallas also like they picked up a couple of injuries. Parsons played well in the first half, but he looked like he got a knock, and he hasn't been right for a few weeks. I don't think. Jason Peters went off injured. Their left tackle, he's, he's been playing well for them. I think another offensive lineman went off as well. Um, so the, the 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 Cowboys took some took some hits against the Bucks. Um, I, the fact that this game is shortened down now to two points handicap um, for the 49ers. Uh, uh, listen, at some point, Brock Purdy's going to have a uh, a game like a rookie and he's not going to play well and he may be turning the ball over um, but even if he does I, I, the Niners defence are good enough to get him out of trouble they're good enough to give him a short field to get him back in the goal and I wonder if his down spell was that first half against Seattle where mm. he clearly was feeling the nerves and they, they protected him a little bit And but the way he finished the game he, he played better than Dax played all season um, so for me it's the 49ers and I'll cheer them on I don't particularly like the Cowboys do like the 49ers, pick the 49ers, go 49ers. Dave? Yeah, I think um, last week with Brock, I think he, so he'd already played the Seahawks this year, had he? 
No, they've no. just been playing against the San Francisco offense, right? They actually played against both Trey and Jimmy, I believe. No, they had. They, they, they played season. Purdy in one of his first games. They, Seattle were the only team that's played him twice. They have played him twice. Yeah. I, 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 I thought that because basically in the first half, what I thought they were doing was getting people into his passing lanes and yeah. putting them off making the throws he'd normally been making. But they adjusted to it. They started rolling him a little bit further outside the pocket, giving him a room to, to uh, actually see his targets. He also started to move a lot more himself. Like in, in, He wasn't constantly just bailing on the pocket. He was moving up in the pocket. He was escaping pressure. I think someone had a word with him and told him what he needed to do and he seemed to adjust to it. Um, I, I thought last week was a game where he struggled because they'd, they'd already seen the offence, they'd already seen him. Um, and I, I thought if anyone was going to be well prepared for what the, the 49ers were doing, it was the Seahawks. Um, if Mika's injured, Mika Parsons, um, I don't believe that they're going to be able to move him off his spot enough. I think he's decent enough. At, yeah, I, I can't see a way Dallas can win this unless they just come out and throw everything into the offense and somehow get it right, score on every drive and, and win a shootout. They're not going to be able to win this by by keeping the, the scoring limited by the 49ers. It'll be a high-scoring game or an absolute shellacking from the 49ers yeah. on, 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 the, on the Cowboys. Um yeah. Okay. I can't, I can't come up with a reason that the Cowboys can win it. I hope, I hope I think, it's closer than I think, just for the sake of entertainment. I'm not sure it will be. Right, here's my picks for AFC and NFC Divisional Weekend. It's going to be the Chiefs, the Bills, the Eagles and the Niners. Dan? It's all the home teams, yeah. All the home teams. Uh, me, Chiefs, Bengals, Eagles, Niners. Okay. Dave? I'm on... Down side of the fence, I feel like I should mix it up just so it's all different. But yeah, pick the Jags. What I think. So what? Huh? Pick the Jags. Yeah. Pick what, the Giants. Ahead. Yeah, please. I'm no, not picking. No, uh, nobody's. We picking. should have I'm to. We should have to support the team I'm... that knocks our team out for the rest of the playoffs. Hey, hey, hey! hey, hey. <laughs> That's what we should do. So what? you have to now support the Giants. Why I'm definitely I have to support not the doing is picking the Giants and giving Eagles fans ammunition because yeah, no, they're so fair. stupid they won't realise that this is a bit. <laughs> Wow, love this. Uh, look, we've got two things to do and we're rapidly running out of time. We have rabbited on for far too long in this podcast already. First one is to talk about the pub and the Super Bowl. Over to you, Dan Horton. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to be part of a Super Bowl party at the, at the Nook and Broom in Bramall. So where we've been sort of touting all season, um, there's a couple of football teams, uh, local teams that are going to come down. We're hoping to get sort of 50 to 80 people in there, really. Um, they, they have agreed, they've got a late licence to show the game. Um, from 8 o'clock, it'll be an NFL pub only. Uh, we're thinking of doing a little brief record whilst we're down there. Um, but it'd be great to see as many people as we can. They are going to put some offers together. At the minute, we've got 50p wings, um, two-for-one cocktails and drinks. They have agreed. They, they've asked, they asked me what, what would work for us, and I said the kitchen needs to be open late, and they're going to open the kitchen until 2 o'clock. They've got a late license, so we can eat, drink, and be merry for a long time in there. Um, we'll put more details out on the socials as we get it, so will they. Um, but if you want to come down, you want to have a chat, you want to watch the Super Bowl with us, Dave's coming up from well, Birmingham, I think. God, yep. God help us. Um, if you want to come down and have a laugh, we'll probably do some special bets, so we'll do some special stuff, uh, and we'll get some more special offers with the pub. Um, I think it'll be class. I think we'll have a load of people there that like managed people watching the NFL in a nice, safe environment. We'll have 20 screens. We'll have got a kitchen open. We've got a bar. What more do you want? Uh, we'll also have end zone kit that will provide some bits and pieces. We'll keep that one under wraps until a little bit closer to the time. But there are plans afoot. So, uh, yeah, stay in touch. Keep across the socials. We'll be uh, keeping giving you all of the details as and when we get them. Uh, which means it's time, as the uh, as the two minute warning goes, for us to come up with our uh, utter punts of the week. Dan, who are you going with? Hmm. Greg Roman, offensive coordinator, Ravens, temporarily. I don't think he'll be there much longer. Um, you've got a backup quarterback in. You've your team, your defense, and your team have played an absolutely perfect game plan. Your offense have got yourselves right where you need to be. You're on the two yard line. If you score. They, they will not come back at you. You've got them in wait where you want them. And you decide to run a quarterback sneak with a quarterback who's been not in practice all week because he's got a bad shoulder. 
um, when you've got a top class running back who's clearly out, who's having a cracking game, Dobbins behind him, you give the ball to Huntley, he fumbles the ball, you lose, and you're going to lose your job. Greg Roman, utter punt. Uh, Dave? Nice, by the way. My, my nomination for a punt of the week is a fictional character. It's Kirko James. Kirko James. Um, the, 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 he doesn't play safety, does he? No. The, the paladin I was attempting to create for Kirk. <laughs> the fourth quarter cutthroat. The the alternative personality yeah. that isn't gutless and panics. Um, didn't pay off, did it? Everyone tried to manifest it. Ah, yeah, Kirk, when we still have a shot in the game. I mean, look, if you throw the ball down the field past the sticks and it had been intercepted, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. It was the fact that he hit a covered tight end five yards short of the sticks. He, all, he didn't learn the lesson from the Bills game where if you just give Justin Jefferson a chance, amazing things can happen. Um, the fact that he barely targeted Jefferson in the second half was ridiculous. Um, and I know that there were plays which were designed to target Jefferson no matter what. Kirk just falls under pressure. It's what he does. It's what he's always done. It's a crying shame because I actually do quite like the guy. Um but if we keep him around, uh, Kevin O'Connell's going to end up getting fired. Crazy will get fired. And I don't think either of them particularly wedded to him. I think it's the owners. But yeah, Kirko Chains, utter punt of the week. Uh, sort it out, mate. I, it's fa- I think it's, I think it's, um, I was going to say I think it's fair, but actually it's completely nuts. So we'll just move on uh, from him <laughs> naming a fictional character as is utter punt of the week. I'm going to go with a team. I'm going to name an entire Steelers. franchise. Steelers? As my utter punt of the week. Browns. Dallas Cowboys. Where? No other reason than that then they dumped out Tom Brady and, and they're just not very good and somehow seem to be outperforming themselves and I don't really understand it and it's confusing and scary. So Dallas Cowboys utter punt. Good. Uh, that's all we've got time for this week. Beautiful work. I love that there was just zero response. Everybody's in agreement. Yeah, you're right, Liam. Let's just keep moving on. Uh, Dan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Dave, thank you. Pleasure. And we will see you next week on Lots of Pods.